to rise for climate, jobs, justice. It's a coalition of 350 Maine and the Sierra Club and the Poor People's Campaign and Maine Conservation Voters and a host of others. Uh, and we are one of about 400 marches this day around the world. We're giving our march a local flavor. It's focused on the warming Gulf of Maine. And as you can see, we are honoring the noble codfish. Those of you can, who can attend will hear youth speakers and a eulogy to the codfish on the steps of City Hall. So all of this looks ahead to what's going to happen in five days in California and what's going to happen in less than two months with the midterm elections. And all of us can do our bit by working locally because the sooner the world goes to 100% clean renewable energy, the safer we'll be. Thank you. happened right here in our state, right? After five years of fighting, everyone here in the state, in Maine, New Hampshire, Vermont, throughout New England and Canada, when dirty tar sands oil wanted to come through our pipeline and be shipped out to sea to market, we all started banding together and no one stopped working for five years straight. I want to give an especially big shout out to Protect South Portland and the amazing people that never once gave up for five straight years, victory! And that victory is so very, very, very sweet because we just set a precedence that guess what, big oil, you don't get to come into our towns and make them dirty and filthy and make our people sick and our planet sick. We will fight back! I'm sorry to do this after bringing you up on that nice high, I'm gonna bring you down low because this march was actually a funeral procession, right? Because our Gulf of Maine's really, really sick. Or in fact, our Gulf of Maine is the, one of the warmest waters, warming waters because of climate change around the globe. And so today, as you march the streets, as all of you are well aware, we are honoring the fact that there's a bunch of beautiful creatures out there that are sick and dying. And we wanna make sure that we do our part to change the tide there. Well, thank you, fellow mourners. You know, the fishing in the Gulf of Maine used to be second to none. But the herring are disappearing. The shrimp are gone. The lobsters are moving ever northward. And commercial fishing for cod, the cornerstone species of our world-famous fishery, has utterly collapsed. We have borne on this casket from Lincoln Park to these steps of City Hall a large and noble codfish. But let us honor his life and memory today by giving thought to his plight. He is, after all, one of us. For cod's sake, for cod's and your children's sake, S-T-O-P, cut the carbon. To the honored memory of Sam Codfish then, let us sing. Oh, Sam the Cod is dead and gone. You'll never see him more. He used to love the Gulf of Maine, but that was long before. We'll remember you, Sam Codd. We will not forget you when this day, November 6th, comes in the midterm elections. Thank you, everybody. It is my honor 
to introduce the first speaker, Lucia Durrani, a junior at Casco Bay High School. Lucia. Hi, everybody. Thank you so much for coming out. I'm so honored to be the first speaker of all of these amazing people. Everyone who I marched with is just so inspiring. Um, today, I'm here to address the issue of ocean acidification in the Gulf of Maine. I've been lucky enough to grow up on Peaks Island, Maine, which is just off the coast of Portland, and so I've seen firsthand how the shellfish are being affected by ocean acidification. Excess CO2 has found its way into our oceans and is now messing with the pH levels. Um, because of this, we will see a, do a lack of natural resources for the shellfish to build their shells and grow. Next up, we have Ryan, and he's going to be talking to us about what the youth are doing. In 1950, the world's population of 2.5 billion produced 1.5 million tons of plastic. In 2016, a population of more than 7 billion produced 320 million tons of plastic. This number is expected to double by the year 2034. When I first learned about this fact, I really questioned the validity of it. How can we as a society be living like this? And next, Raina Sparks, a junior from Cape Elizabeth. Some of the greatest changes in American history, uh, whether they be suffrage, equal access to facilities, or reproductive rights, have all come around because everyday people exercise their power to protest. When we stand together, we are more powerful than any industry and any government, and we can make a difference. Hi, I'm Hunter Lachance, and I'm an asthmatic. I'm here to talk about asthma and its relationship to pollution and climate change. My life when I, with asthma started when I was in fourth grade. It changed everything. Asthma, asthma affected nearly every aspect of my life. It was difficult to come to terms that my life would never be the same. But I'm not alone. There are over six million kids around the U.S. with asthma, and Maine has a highest rate of ch has some of the highest rates of children asthma than any other state. Pollu pollution from cars and factories upwind also pollute carbon dioxide and other greenhouse gases. Climate change is one of Maine's biggest threats because everyone has a right to breathe clean air. I'd now like to introduce my classmate and good friend Ruthie Metcalf. Maine has a once-in-a-generation opportunity to lead the way in energy innovation, create thousands of good jobs, build a strong statewide economy that works for all of us, increase our energy independence while reducing people's energy costs, and protect our quality of life. These jobs have enormous political power and can create any number of opportunities for our state to advance and thrive both economically and environmentally. I urge you to create and push policies that support and jumpstart a future of Maine fueled by renewable energy. If we do this, we will find the secure and well-paying jobs our state needs, our people need. Remember that this is not a partisan issue. It's about doing what is right for Maine's future and our future generations to come. Hello, my name is Luke Sakara Flanders and I am a co-founder of Community Water Justice. As climate change affects the globe, it creates new stresses on formerly reliable water sources. These stresses on worldwide water supplies are spurring the consumption of bottled water, which in turn is driving the privatization of Maine's rich water resources. Corporate control of water sources will only exacerbate the problem because priority will go to those who can afford it. Here in Maine, Nestle's is exploiting municipal water sources using its most profitable brand in the United States. Poland Spring. So, what can we do? The best place to start is to stop buying bottled water. We need to wake up. We need to wise up. We need to open our eyes. 